Now, you brought up um, something that definitely I feel is, a, is one of the reasons why we connect is the simple fact that you, you did grow up uh, without a fatherly figure, right? You're, you're without your bi biological father. And I had the same experience as well. Um, prior to being born, uh, my father was uh, taken away from me, actually uh, wrongly convicted of a crime and was sentenced to, you know, over 10 years, if I'm not mistaken. He ended up serving, I believe, 11 years on the dot or 10 to 11 years and was released because he was actually proven innocent after so many years, right? So you can imagine from zero to, you know, 10, 11, I did not have that uh, a father figure. Now I did, uh, thank God, you know, my mom uh, was able to, you know, say find love again. And she, uh, you know, uh, found a, a very good loving man who is my stepdad. I actually consider him uh, to, you know, have taken that role of father mm -hmm. you know and it's still it's still one of those tough things for me to even say the word father or dad or daddy you know when you don't get to say those words as a, as a young boy as a young uh man yes the 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 masculinity part you know does get say confused and i can only imagine what that's like in today's environment you know mm. where one could make the argument that masculinity is say under attack or 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 at least being challenged in in ways that we have not seen before um traditionally speaking so i know that's one of the things that we really connected on is being able to grow up with you know single mom single household um but still be able to capture the the masculine part and i want to ask you what were some strategic relationships that you built in your say teenage years and young adult adolescent years to develop that that manhood that masculine strength and be able to articulate that message that that behavior effectively what, what were some people in your life that really caused you to you know step out of your shell yeah great question and uh, that's that's one of the battles that we grapple with is uh, looking for who we are in other people. And uh, a lot of times it came from individuals who did not even look like me. I, I know for a fact, um, I, if it was not for my homebound uh, teacher's husband, Mr. Wenham, uh, who when I had a bald head, when I was getting chemotherapy and radiation, when I was out of school my sophomore year, he stepped in to my life as a surrogate mentor, surrogate father figure, took me to my first baseball game, just his presence alone. And, and, it, and it communicated the fact as well, just because you don't look like me doesn't mean you can't fight for me. Uh, I had another teacher, Mr. Mr. Cantor. I, I was, I'm, I'm more English than math and I was failing uh, geometry miserably. <laughs> and I put in a lot of uh, hours after um, school just to be able to do what I needed to do to, to, to pass the class, this, that, and the other. And he took an investment in me, just a, a Jewish man who didn't look like me, a Jewish man, a white man. And then also my principal, uh, Mr. Herb Ivory, uh, at the school that I was at, came up to see me at the hospital, just made an investment in me, whether it was just putting their arm over my shoulder and, and just uh, telling me some encouraging words. And uh, then as well, my grandfather, if it wasn't for him and God rest his soul, uh, taught me how to tie a tie. And uh, I developed a mentorship program for young brothers called Boys to Books uh, through Literacy, Leadership, Life Skills, Enrichment. And he told me, he said, you know what, Eddie, you don't have to tell anybody how good you are. If you're good at what you do, they'll tell you. And so I think it's very important and imperative to have positive mentors beyond Jeezy, Weezy, Yeezy, and Jay-Z. We see it on the TV screen, beyond a, a baller, beyond a shot caller, beyond uh, somebody who's uh, who's doing something bad in the community. We can use those examples of those maybe who came from the hood or are now doing something good. Those who went through a place of struggle and transformed that into strength. Are they not heroes? Are they not good mentors and surrogate father figures that we need? And so uh, a sincere salute, salute to them uh, because of those individuals 
uh, they made me the man I am today. And another thing I'll say this as well. A lot of times we think our mentor is all about an older man trying to teach and train a young brother. Men need mentors. You can't even spell the word mentor without men. Mm. So mentorship speaks to an ever evolving uh, cycle of life that we don't have it all figured out. A know-it-all really knows nothing at all. You've got to be quick to learn, slow to speak, and and take the advice and, and understand that mentorship teaches us in two ways. Life teaches us in two ways, mistakes and mentors. I'd rather learn from the mistakes of a mentor than to bump my own head. I'd rather go off the trail that's already been blazed than to try to chart my own and learn from people's missteps and mistakes and really uh, chart a path towards success. Mm, that's, that's, that's a big takeaway from me is that from the beginning of your uh, response, you had mentioned that they may not look like you uh, yeah. in, in regards to the type of influence that we receive in the areas that we need mm -hmm. that we may not see, right? Ex if, for example, being uh, raised in a single uh, family, single mom household like the two of us growing up without a fatherly role we're not exactly looking, you know, uh, as we're growing up. In fact, we're actually quite rebellious towards that. Um, but we don't realize how much we actually need it until someone that doesn't look like you starts really understanding you more than the person that may look like you. And that, that was big for me in my life because there were a lot of people that influenced me that didn't necessarily look like me. Um, and I think that's more common, I would say, in probably minority communities um, or, or any household that isn't financially stable or financially secure or, you know, has had many, many uh, tough circumstances. I, I would say I would be willing to bet that it's usually that case. And I know in my household, I don't think income ever breached 40, 50,000. Uh, per year, so we're always below the the average income, very low uh, middle class, not poverty line, uh, but in some some cases we were running on 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 fumes, right? <laughs> running on on low mm -hmm. many different times, and I would say one of the very first um, um, big influences in my life was a um, an Italian restaurant owner, uh, mm -hmm. white guy. You know, but, uh, you know, yeah. Italian, Italian guy with a uh, mix of other some other things. And, you know, he, he taught me a pretty good work ethic. And prior to that, my my stepdad, I have to give him a lot of credit. Just being there, a man, mm. you know, in, in the presence from early age, six, seven is when my mom uh, really, you know, connected with him. And my mom's been with him still to this day and still lives in, you know, we still live under one household. So having that was was good, but he don't look like me. And then the Italian owner don't look like me. And then when I got into sales and, and marketing, I had a, a guy from Hawaii. He don't look like me either. And it was yeah. these male figures that are pouring into us. And just, I would say, what, what are some strategic ways, behaviors that a young uh, man or woman can say be a little more open to receiving that um, especially when we've dealt with traumas you know certain tragedies certain challenges and obstacles to kind of ride this conversation a little bit longer what are the specific uh, uh, behaviors or attitudes that if you had to go back in time where you were like either lost or rebellious you know you didn't want to listen to anybody because uh, I've, I've, we all go through that phase. What were, you know, an attitude or behavior you have today that you would want to, you know, feed into the next generation? Yeah, that's that's good. That's good uh, question. Um, I think one of the uh, key aspects and 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 avenues is that uh, oftentimes the more exposure that we have to information, the more we think we know beyond our predecessors, those who have come before us. And so, um, you know, the, the world is a, an ocean of knowledge, but a lot of people are still drowning in ignorance. 
And I think there's a, a fine line between information and revelation. Um, information, yes, it can change situations. However, revelation gives you a whole aspect of how to approach that to not find yourself back in where you should never be at again. Um, and I think it, it begins with having more of a receptive ear to hear, having a receptive ear to listen, having a receptive ear and a keen eye to understand that um, just because somebody may have dropped you does not mean that the next person is going to hurt you. I know for me, uh, and I saw a lot of ambivalence and even pushback from a lot of the young brothers I had mentored through the years initially, um, the anger, the animosity, the uh, suspicion of, are you going to leave? Are you going to abandon me? Why? Because now I'm standing in proxy for an absentee father. I'm standing in proxy for somebody who extended their hand to what they thought would heal and help them, but they wind up hurting and harming them. And so beyond rhetoric, I had to build relationship first. And uh, taking an, an investment, taking an interest in the other individual and actually being able to hear them out, actually being able just to give people an opportunity and a chance uh, to invest something in you that uh, you may not have had. You know, uh, I think mentors make deposits. And, we, you know, you, you're the financial guru on this. I think you might agree with me on this. Mentors, individuals of keen insight and wisdom make deposits so that you can make withdrawals for the rest of your life. And I think that's what it's really about.